All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Dana, and I'm a member of our education team here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, coming to you live from Long Beach. And I am so excited to have you, Squid Squad, join me today, because we are talking about one of my favorite animals. Today's program is going to be all about sea turtles, and we're going to talk a little bit about what exactly a sea turtle is. We're going to talk about different species of sea turtles. We're going to talk about a really cool adaptation. Now that means something that helps them survive in their habitat. And then we're going to chat a little bit about the sea turtles that we actually have here at the aquarium. So it's going to be a turtley packed program for my squid squad today, but we would love to have you participate throughout this program. If you see this number right here, that one right there, 562 286-1838. We do invite you to text us in your observations, your questions, anything that you want to know about sea turtles, anything that you're wondering a little bit more about. Go ahead and ask us those questions. I have Jen in the studio today who's going to be controlling what we see behind me. And Stacy's going to take all of those questions you send in and she'll either answer some on the computer or she'll send some in to here. We're going to try to answer as many as we can on air. But Turtles usually spark a lot of questions. So I hope that we have so many that Stacy can't even handle it. You okay with that out there? All right, she said, sure, let's go. So my friends, what that means is as we talk about our turtles and we learn and discover as much as we can, we want you to keep exploring and asking us questions and keeping us on our toes. Are you ready, Squid Squad? All right, let's go. So today we're gonna talk about what is a sea turtle, right? So we're going to put up a video and I'm going to encourage you to make some observations. What do you notice? What makes the animal that you're seeing a turtle? Okay, and it looks like we already got our first question. Way to go, JD. So your question is, what do turtles eat? Sea turtles eat. We're going to talk about that here in just a moment. We actually have some video. But first, let's watch that, exp uh, that, that video of a turtle. And how do we know it's a turtle? Hmm... Well, it's not a whale. It doesn't look like a fish, but how do I know that? How do we know it's a turtle? What do you friends see? Oh my, what was that? That turtle took a breath. All right, so what did you notice? Did you see long flippers? Yeah, so sea turtles, unlike their land counterparts who walk around on legs, Sea turtles have these flippers right here, and they use them to help swim through the ocean. In fact, the largest sea turtle in the world is called the leatherback sea turtle. Not this one, but the leatherback, their flippers are longer than my arm. In fact, if you took your arm and then put another arm next to it, that's probably how long they are. And they like to throw them around. And they move sand when they're on the shore, which we'll talk about later on too. That's a surprise. And they're really, really strong. So you could see this was a hawksbill sea turtle. It's a little bit smaller. But again, it has those long flippers that help them move. Now, some other things I noticed are the beautiful colors on the back. It's kind of covered in algae. A lot of turtles are. That's because they're slow-moving animals. And so algae likes to just settle on them. But what did you notice? It's got this hard plate, right? It's really strong back there. So sea turtles have, a, well, we call it a shell or a carapace. Now, unlike land turtles, what do land turtles do when they get scared? Right? They pop into their little shell right there. They're able to tuck their head all the way in. Can we do that? Let's see. Whoop! Ugh. Okay, I got scared. All right, so sea turtles can't do that. Instead, sea turtles, we can kind of see its little neck right here. Their neck just stays there. They're able to move it a little bit, right? Can you do that with your neck? Yeah, there you go. But they're not able to tuck it inside. Now, inside their shell here, it's all their organs. It's like looking right here in their body, right? So they have a stomach, and they have bones, and they have, like, ribs. So there's a stuff going on in here. But this hard plate, it helps protect them, right? Imagine if you got to run around with a suit of armor on all the time. You'd be pretty safe, right? So they have a suit of armor over their whole body right there. Now what else? Let's watch that video one more time. What did you notice that that turtle was doing? So it's swimming, yeah. Right, we see the colors. Oh my gosh, we're getting so many questions. In fact, 
Uh, Rumi, you're asking a perfect question right now because we asked, how does it breathe? Now, if you notice, see those bubbles? That's where it just surfaced. Sea turtles breathe air. They have lungs just like you and I, which confuses people because they live in the ocean, right? Can we think of any other animals that live in the ocean that also have lungs? Hmm. Not fish. What do fish have? Yeah, fish have gills. Good job. Sharks also are fish, so they have gills. But what about a whale? Yeah, whales, just like this humpback right here, whales have lungs, okay? Now, whales are mammals, okay? And you and I, yeah, you, you right there. Yeah, you're a mammal. And so whales and humans share characteristics. They share things because they're both mammals. Now, let's go back to a photo of a sea turtle. Is it a mammal? Let's see. Well, they have lungs, so that's good, but there's a lot of characteristics that are different between mammals and our sea turtle friends, and that's because sea turtles are reptiles. A reptile. Can you think of any other reptiles? Oh, yeah, a lizard. Yeah. What else? Are snakes reptiles? Are dinosaurs reptiles? Oh my gosh. Oh, you're for sure a reptile. It kind of looks like a dinosaur. It's not. It's an iguana. But this is another reptile. So what does this animal and sea turtles have in common? Because if you ask me, they look very, very different. Let's jump back to that sea turtle photo. So a reptile, remember before I mentioned the bones on the inside? Bones, yeah. So reptiles all have a backbone or a vertebrate. So just like you and I have one right here, they also have a spinal cord running through their body. So they're all vertebrates. Well, what else? Hmm. What's covering its body here? What do you notice? So there's little dots, right? Even on the flipper right here, even on the back. These are called scoots, okay? So they're kind of like scales. Scoots or scales. Just like that iguana had hard plates all over its body. Scoots or scales. So all reptiles have one form of, or the other. Now what else? Hmm, you know what? I'm kind of cold in here. In fact, I have goosebumps and I'm kind of shivering. That's because I'm a warm-blooded animal. My body is working really hard to stay a certain temperature, okay? It's trying to stay 98.6 degrees. And when it gets colder than that, it starts to shiver. And when, whew, when it gets hotter than that, it starts to get sweaty, right? Because you're trying to get back to a certain temperature. Now, sea turtles and other reptiles... They're not like that. They're what we call cold-blooded animals. And that means that if they're in warm tropical water, they're going to be warm. And if they're in cold water, like off the coast of California, they're going to be a little bit colder. Okay. In fact, only one sea turtle in the world travels north up to like Washington State, or even um, kind of colder water, even up into Monterey Bay, right? Which is pretty cold. So um, sea turtles like to typically be in warmer water because that's more comfortable for their body. They change depending on the habitat that they live in, right? So we fight really hard to stay 98.6 degrees, but they can run on other temperatures. So cold-blooded animals. Now, last but not least, which is going to lead us in uh, to another topic here later on, Reptiles, like this sea turtle that we have here, they lay eggs. And sea turtles do it in a very, very cool way. So we're going to chat about that later on. First, we're going to talk about the different species of sea turtles. And before we get there, I do want to answer uh, Rumi's second question. And they want to know, how do sea turtles swim with such a heavy shell? Oh, we've got other questions coming in. I love it. Okay, so, well, how do they swim with such a heavy shell? Let's look at it. They have this really big carapace, right, or shell. And they also have these really strong flippers. So let's watch another video of them swimming. Either the same video or maybe we have something different. Let's watch how they move around. Here, I'll step off so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so remember they do have lungs inside of them so they can take air which makes them a little bit more floaty, right? They take that, oop, false breath. 
Now they take a breath. But then they also have these really, really strong flippers, right? Imagine, just like when you go into a pool or a lake or a river or the ocean, if you've ever been swimming before, and you use your really strong arms, right? It's the same idea. See, I look just like that sea turtle. Whee! Wait, moving and grooving was earlier. What am I doing? All right, so our sea turtles are able to swim because they have really strong flippers. Now, JD and Annalise and Ariana, oh, if so many people, want to know, what do sea turtles eat? Good question. So what does it look like that might eat? Do you think they're, well, they have pretty strong jaws, okay? Um, they have teeth like points right here, but they're not really chewing anything. So sea turtles, like our green sea turtle here, they like to feed on jellies. That's right, like jellyfish. However, the young ones eat eelgrass or seagrass or algae in our oceans. So I think we have a video of one eating some, um, some algae. Let's check out what that might look like. Now that's like us eating a salad, right? So check it out. Really strong jaws and it's cruising around. Um, nom, 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 Oh man, this is making me hungry. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Now, Sophia wants to know, we talked about those strong flippers of theirs. Can they porpoise out of the water? Great word, Sophia. So porpoising, if you've never heard that, is when animals go whoo, out of the water. So like dolphins, when they go whoo, 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 out of the water, that's called porpoising. And sea turtles don't typically porpoise. They're kind of slow moving animals. They can swim quicker than you and I because they're so strong, but ah, they can cruise between one to six miles per hour and up to 22 miles per hour. Thank you, Stacy. Looks like Annalise and Ariana also wanted to know that. So like I said, Sophia, they can swim pretty quick, but not enough to really poof, jump them out of the water. At least not that I'm aware of. Have you ever heard of any flying sea turtles? Nope, nope. All right. Now, Grace and Malcolm want to know, how do turtles talk to each other? Huh. How do turtles talk to each other? So turtles don't make a whole lot of noise. They can kind of grunt, but that's about it. Their communication is typically going to be body language. Okay, now what that means is... What did that body language just tell you? Did I want to chat with you right then? No, I definitely didn't, right? Uh, what about now? I'm really excited. I'm talking to you and I can, I don't even think it's worth it. So I didn't even say anything, but I clearly was excited. So that's what body language is. It's, it's reading what somebody's body is doing and turtles can do that as well. They can do it through behavior, right? So um, the same idea. Now that's a great question. And then Rumi wants to know, how long do they live? Ugh, such a good question because Sea turtles could live a really long time, okay? So some sea turtles are estimated up over 100 years, some only around 70 to 80. It depends on the species, and that is actually going to lead us into our next topic. We're going to chat about the fact that there are multiple species of sea turtles. Who knew, right? So when I was younger, I thought there was green sea turtles, and that's it. And then as I learned and discovered a little bit more, I realized that there were seven species of sea turtles. Now friends, that's fairly new knowledge for me, okay? So let's talk about them. This one right here is a green sea turtle. Now, how did I know that? Well, the easiest way for me to tell is I look right behind their eye and I count. There's one, two, three, four, postocular, which is a really hard way to say behind the eye. Scoots. Remember, scoots are the um, scale-like pieces on our turtle here. So four behind the eye scoots. All right. So that's a green sea turtle. Now that's just one of them. Let's count. So we got one green sea turtle. Well, here at the aquarium, we have olive ridley sea turtles. So that's a different species. They look very similar when they're in water and you don't really know, like, right? A little bit similar. However, you'll notice that the scoots back behind are Oliver Ridley's eyes. They're more like of a yellow and they kind of blend in. They're not as obvious as those green sea turtles. So, and then there's their carapace, their, their shell is a little bit different too, the pattern and the coloration. So Oliver Ridley, there's two. 
Now there's another Ridley turtle. It's called a Kemp's Ridley. And Olive Ridley and Kemp's Ridley are the two smallest sea turtles. And even then, they're still like this big. Okay? So they're still pretty big. Now we have a flat back sea turtle. What do you think that one looks like? Yeah, it's pretty flat. Good guess. Flat back sea turtle. That's four. Okay. Now we have a loggerhead sea turtle. Loggerheads look a lot like our greens and a lot like our olive ridley. But again, they're going to have a little bit of a different pattern and a little bit of a different jaw. Now we do have a photo of our next one. Oh, do we have a loggerhead here? Oh, check it out. So we have, uh, it looks like that could also look like a hawksbill here. So they're similar, but what do you notice about this one? This one is covered by all sorts of stuff, right? Remember I said turtles can be pretty slow moving? Well, that allows things to settle on them, right? Imagine if you stayed right where you are right now forever and ever. Dust is going to settle, right? Your dog or cat might come lay on your lap, right? But if you were running around the house all day, things typically aren't going to settle on you, right? Although my cat tries very hard. All right, so our next turtle species is called a hawksbill turtle. Now, hawksbill has a bill, that's like their mouth, just like a hawk, right? Like a bird of prey. Now, birds of prey will typically have strong beaks. So let's take a look at the hawksbill. Do you see that right there? Do you see that mouth? Now, just like the green sea turtle, it has very obvious scoots, right? Remember, those are the dots. But the shape of the mouth is very, very different. Now, hawksbill do like to feed on jellies, and they use that beak to kind of capture and rip in the, to, into the jellies. So, again, the hawksbill turtle, okay? They have a very sharp, pointed nose. And then, can we get a drum roll for this one? This is my favorite and is that Marcelino? Marcelino wants to know what is the biggest turtle of the world? And Marcelino, are you ready? It is. Ta da! Wait. Where is it? We didn't drum roll good enough. Let's go, guys. All right. Here we go. Here we go. It's coming. <laughs> so this turtle can be bigger than me. Bigger than me. There it is. All right, everyone. This right here is a leatherback sea turtle. A leatherback. Now, what do you notice? This one is drastically different than all the others. I'm going to step off the screen and let you take a look. All right. So, like I said, Marcelino, it's the biggest turtle in the world. You might notice that in this picture, it just looks like any other turtle. But this is the one that I said that this flipper right here is longer than my arm, right? This head right here is bigger than my head. This back, their carapace, their shell is very different. So remember, they're called leather backs. What do you think their back feels like? I knew you guys were smart, right? My squid squad, you're sticking with me. Leather back turtle backs kind of feel like leather. Now what that means is unlike the hard scoots of our green turtle and our hawksbill and our ridley and our flatback and our all of them, our leatherback has more of a uh, softer, it's kind of a rubbery leather feel. And so it doesn't have those same scoots, but you'll notice that it has these really big ridges running down them, right? Now what else do you notice? What colors do you see on this turtle? They're not quite the, the greens and browns that we saw before. And yeah, I see polka dots. I see white. Now it's really, really hard to see, but take my word for it. Right here, you can kind of see it. There's actually a little pink spot and that's weird, right? But what it is, is that's where they can sense all sorts of information about their environment. Just like we use our eyes and our ears and our nose to sense things. This turtle right here uses that to sense uh, light to sense um, uh, all sorts of things, right? Which is pretty crazy. Now, Ryder and Shane want to know what animals should turtles protect themselves from? That's a great question. I don't know, let's think about it. What might eat a sea turtle? No, whales don't typically like sea turtles. They're certainly big enough though. Hmm. 
sharks? Yeah, definitely. So sharks, especially tiger sharks, they love to eat green sea turtles. Um, and they, the turtles are really cool. They'll use that hard back of theirs and they kind of like push it towards the shark so that when the shark's jaws come towards it, it actually just hits that hard back. It's really amazing to watch. Now leatherbacks, once you get to this size, there's not a whole lot that's going to go after you. So leatherbacks can be over 2,000 pounds. Like I said, my, my friends, they're bigger than me. So put your arms out, okay? Stand on your tippy toes, and now swell up as big as you can. Ugh! And you are almost the size of a leatherback sea turtle, right? They're so big. So our leatherbacks don't really need to protect themselves from a whole lot, except from you and me. Now, what do you mean? Oh, it looks like uh, Annalise and Ariana also wanted to know what kind of animals eat sea turtles. So good question. The same animals that are going to eat them are the ones that they need to protect themselves from, right? So that's why they have those strong shells. That's why they have those strong flippers, right? To move and swim away from their predators. And then, of course, this turtle has something called um, they're, they're, uh, they're giants. They're the giants of the sea. And once, like I said, once you're that big, you don't have to worry about a whole lot except for you and me. And the reason I say that is because you and I are on land. And a lot of things that humans have done have really impacted our sea turtles, even though they live in the ocean. So let's talk about nesting, nesting sea turtles, okay? Oh, we have some more leatherback questions. One second, let's answer these first. So JD wants to know, why are leatherbacks so different from other turtles? Great question, JD. So I can answer why in the sense of why they look different, right? Like, or what about them is different. Well, it obviously has a softer back. They're significantly larger, different colors. Um, but as far as like why, well, animals can be very different depending on what they feed on, depending on where they live. Remember I mentioned that only one turtle goes into cold water? It's this turtle. And this turtle loves loves to eat jellies. And there's a lot of jellies in cold water, right? So maybe this turtle is able to be so big because they're so big that cold water doesn't really affect their body. It base, it's actually a really cool word. Are you ready? Remember, I called them the giants of the sea. And this word is gigantothermy. What? Gigantothermy. So what it means is they're so big that their body, even though it's cold-blooded, even though it can be drastically affected by the external habitat, the external temperature, they're so big that it really doesn't make a difference. So they're able to go into that cold water. So maybe that's why they're different. They were able to spread out into a different, what us scientists like to call a niche, right? They try to fit into different places and take advantage of the food and the habitat that they're able to spread into. Now, um, ooh, we have an observation. Delilah says leatherback sea turtles look like whales. Yeah, they do. They're big. They're dark. They have these long pectoral flippers like a humpback whale. In fact, let's go ahead and throw that humpback whale photo on and look at the similarities. Look, the flippers are almost the same. Now, this pectoral flipper on this humpback is 16 feet long. And our sea turtles aren't that big. But you're right, Delilah, they do look similar. And they move around kind of similar, right? They use those strong pectoral flippers. Of course, our whale also uses its tail. All right, my friends. Now, turtle nesting. I want to wrap this up so that we can really understand how we affect turtles. Okay? So sea turtles, even though they live in the ocean, in the sea, if you will, right? They come back on land to nest. So remember, I said all reptiles lay eggs, okay? Now, sea turtles, we're all going to be a sea turtle here, ready? Take your breath. You're swimming through the ocean. Whew, whew. Oh, no. I got to go lay eggs. Sea turtles will migrate all the way. They're coming closer. All the way. Some of them migrate thousands of miles to go back to the exact same beach where they were born. Then... The females ugh, really got to work their way up onto the beach because they've been swimming for a long time and moving on land is really hard. In fact, as sea turtles come up onto the beach, you can hear them really huff and puff like, ugh. okay, I got to do it again. Ready? Ugh. And they work so hard to get up onto the beach. 
Now, they're really smart. They try to do this at high tide. That way, the water is as far up the beach as it can be, and then they don't have to go as far. Then, turtles will get up on the beach, and their cute little back flippers. Let's see if we can get a sea turtle picture up. All right, so their little back flippers, they use those to start digging a nest. All right, and so they'll take one flipper. I'm going to pretend I'm the back flippers right now, okay? And they go, and they toss sand out, and then they go, and toss sand out, and, and they just keep on tossing sand. Eventually, they're going to build a little beautiful hole in the sand, just like that. There we go. Perfect. Little back flipper, right? So you can see they're not as long and strong as the front ones, but they're able to wiggle down, get the back end of them as far into the sand as they can, and then just start digging, okay? Now, leatherbacks, they're very cool. Their flippers, their back flippers are like this big, okay? And they scoop the sand, and they're very, very slow and smooth about it, and they go, and then they toss it, and then, and they toss it. And they're typically doing this in wet sand, so that's almost what it sounds like. That's them kind of scooping through sand. Then they build this beautiful little hole, and they start to drop their eggs. Plop, 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 plop. And they drop their eggs, and the eggs just fall right on top of each other, right? Pretty crazy. Imagine if, do you have siblings? Imagine if you were born, and you just fell on top of each other. That'd be crazy, right? But that's what our sea turtles do. Plop, 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 plop. And that cute little hole is now full of eggs. And then the sea turtles, they come in and they take those back flippers again and they go, pff, 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 and they cover that hole back up. So all of a sudden you have a little packet of sea turtle eggs about that far down into the sand. Now leatherbacks are about that far down into the sand, but most of our turtles are about that far. Okay, maybe a little more. And so those eggs sit down there and sea turtles, develop, right? They have little eggs and little baby sea turtles grow inside of those eggs and then they hatch. Oh my gosh, I just popped out of my shell and there's a foot and a half of sand on top of my head. So these little cuties right here, these are baby leatherbacks. So remember the adults are this big. That's only the size of my hand. They're so cute. They're buried under sand. So they have to start going, Ugh. Uh, uh, and they work their way out. Now, leatherbacks are so slow at this, but green sea turtles, they're really fast. So then they make their way out of the sand and they have to do, 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 scurry all the way. In fact, I think we have a video that Jen's going to try to pull up. And as they're scurrying to the water, they're having to deal with birds and crabs and raccoons. Let's watch this little green sea turtle go, 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 buddy, go, go, buddy, go. Yes, look at it go, right? So turtles, like I said, the green turtles are really fast. I'll tell you what, leatherbacks don't look like that. So they go, 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 go as fast as they can. And they try to get from their nest all the way to the ocean, right? So I talked about our impact. You're like, this is great that they nest, but what, what do I have to do with it? Well, it's getting kind of hot, right? So climate change means that what's normal for weather around our world is a little bit different. And our tropical beaches are getting warmer and warmer. Now sea turtles, they are under all that sand. And if it gets too warm, they're not going to make it out, right? So we've seen sea turtle populations drop because their babies aren't making it out to the ocean. We also see sea turtles struggle because there's a lot more girls than there are boys, okay? And when that ratio is messed up, sometimes it can be a little weird for our turtles to have babies. What else? We're seeing that um, as climate change happens, they are having, oh, you know what? The eggs. I forgot to mention the eggs. People used to poach the eggs. Now, what that means is they'd come dig up turtle nests and take the eggs. And that's not good for a turtle, right? And so we started to lose our turtle populations. In fact, all seven sea turtle populations are endangered, right? So what I encourage you friends to do, we're going to be running out of time and I want to wrap up these last two questions that I've got, but I encourage you to discover a little bit more about sea turtles. We learned what a sea turtle is. 
We learned that they're different than land turtles, right? They are not able to tuck into their shell. We learned that there's different species of sea turtles. We learned that uh, they nest on the sand, right? And they have to make their way back to the ocean, which can be really challenging when you're only the size of a hand. In fact, that one that we saw uh, skittering across the screen, that one's only about this big, right? So there's a lot of challenges for sea turtles. What I want you to do is do a little bit more um, research. What else, what do you want to know about sea turtles? What more do you want to discover? Now we do have an activity for you. It is a sea turtle craft and it's pretty awesome. What I want you to do is I want you to create your own sea turtle species. What color is it? What does it look like? Where might it live, right? And so you Squid Squad can participate by creating that craft after our program. If you have more questions, you can always email us at live at lbaop.org. You can come back tomorrow and join us for all, oh, tide pool habitats. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's going to be with Jen. You're going to learn about tide pools. And so my friends, I just want you to keep on learning. Learn more about turtles, learn more about the ocean, and keep those questions coming. Now we are going to be wrapping up this program. I'll answer these last, looks like five or six questions. Um, Rumi wants to know, do turtles play together like dolphins? Good question. So turtles are pretty solitary animals. Now what that means is they don't really hang out with each other. Sometimes you'll see them near each other, but only once a year do sea turtles come together, and that's when they're nesting. Now, olive ridleys, right, the ones I said we had here, they do this really cool nesting thing called an arabata. And what that means is a whole bunch, thousands of turtles will come up and nest at the exact same time, and the beach is just covered. So then they're hanging out, but like I said, they're pretty lonely, solitary animals. Now, Brighton wants to know how fast can a whale swim compared to the leatherback? Wow, that was a really thought, uh, well thought question. So leatherbacks typically swim one to six miles per hour, but can reach 22 miles per hour. Fin whales are the fastest whales in the ocean and they can swim, uh, fastest large whales, I should say. They can swim up to 23 miles per hour, but orcas, which are the largest dolphin, can swim up to 35 miles per hour. So whales are faster, but leatherbacks can cruise through the ocean as well. Now Cassidy wants to know, why do some of the sea turtles have spots on their flippers? Good question. Great observation, Cassidy. So sea turtles all look different. Remember I said there's seven different species. So the leatherback typically is black with white dots or white rings. Um, the Green turtle usually has really obvious um, scoots. Again, remember the scoots or shells as those things right here, everything on their uh, on their body or scales, sorry, those are scoots as well. So it just depends on the species. If we look actually at our Olive Ridley picture again, you'll see that our Olive Ridley sea turtles don't typically have as obvious scoots on their flippers here. Um, they are going to be a little bit more like a yellow color, like right here. See, a little less obvious. Great observation. And then we have, let's see, is that High Win wants to know why do baby sea turtles go to the ocean right after hatching? Great question. So if you were a baby sea turtle, right, are you going to hang out on land or are you going to work their way down to the water, right? Remember, sea turtles live in the ocean, okay? Now, Reagan wants to know, what are the prickle-like things on the turtle? Oh, all those things that were like growing on the back of it. Yeah, good good observation, Reagan. So those are barnacles or um, some algae can grow on them. Remember, they're really, really slow-moving animals. And so things like to settle on them. Just like we said, if you were to stay, oh, right here. If you, so that's a barnacle, right? It's another type of animal. And it attaches itself to the turtle's back. And then it grows and it filter feeds. Okay, and it just takes food out of the water. Um, great question. All right, my friends, we are wrapping up. Oh, I love it. You just kept Stacy on her toes and sent in so many questions. Thank you so much for joining me, Squid Squad. We're going to be back tomorrow for Tide Pools. Make sure you check out that uh, turtle craft activity that we have for you on our website, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful Wednesday afternoon.